In this video, we're going to go ahead and create our project that we're going to use for our persistence. And what I'm going to do is use a third person project, well, the template. So I'm going to go to games, next, third person, C++, and give this the name of persistence. We'll do uh, persistence tut for short and create the project. Alrighty, everything is created and the project is syncing up inside of Rider. So what we're going to do now is I want to go ahead and turn off the VR plugins because I do not like this appearing every single time I launch the game. So I'm going to go to settings, plugins, search for VR and uncheck Oculus and Steam. I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to go ahead and leave it and just hit save all. Click this little doom jigger down here. I can have that view for my content browser. And close down the Epic Launcher. We go to games, source, then the project name. We have all of our code that we need. And we are pretty much ready to go. So we need to kind of try to take a step back and think about this. So whenever the client loads into the game, so we're going to be testing just strictly dedicated, we want the post login function to fire. So what post login is, is let me actually create a blueprint game mode real quick. So blueprint class, game mode base, example, game mode. Let's load that on up. And I want to set that as the default. So this is just temporary. Where is it? There it is, example game mode. And in the event graph, I'm going to override some functions here. So let's override post, I guess it's called on post login and blueprint. And it takes in a player controller. So I want to print string and show you kind of how it works. So when I play as a listen server, it goes through and it fires. When I play, wait, no. Now I'm playing as a listen server, it fires. When I play as a client for a dedicated server, once I load in, it should still fire. I guess I have to select the default pawn real quick. I guess it's, I think it's a U. Persistence tutorial character, maybe? No. It's the third person character, isn't it? Yep, there we go. So that creates it as well. And if we have more than one client, it happens twice. So each time a client loads into the game, well, let me rephrase that, on the server, anytime a client makes a connection to the game, post login is going to fire. So that allows us to get information that we need from that client. So when he loads in, we can A, check if there's an entry with his information already in it. If there is not, we create that entry in the database. If there already is an entry with that information in it, what we do is we retrieve that information and use it. So for example, let's say I've already been in the server and I logged out of the game up here. So what's going to happen is I rejoin the server. So I press play, I rejoin, post login runs, goes out to our API, goes to the database, says, hey, this guy's been here before, grabs our X, Y, and Z coordinates, goes back to the API, goes back to the game, in which case it's going to spawn our character up here where we actually logged out. And then we go from there, all we do is we simply possess that character. So that's pretty much the way that this is going to end up being handled. So we have to figure out exactly what we want to do for this. So first things first, obviously we want to do location. So we want to have, we'll probably end up creating a custom, let's actually go ahead and do that. Let's create our custom class. And this is just going to contain any information we need, such as the structure we want to create. Actually for now, let's think. I'm trying to think about what the best route to do this would be. So let's see. We want to create struct with information to be passed to API. Trigger, so if 
player not found upon joining. Create new entry. Return. Nothing. If player found upon joining. Read. Return all information. Apply all information to spawned on. And then we possess it. So that's kind of the gist of it. So we're going to have to go ahead and create the struct. In which case, uh, I think it's probably best we actually use the default game mode that comes with it. So I'm going to load up the game mode that came with the project. And we're going to override post login. So we're going to do virtual void post login takes in a player controller, generate the implementation, and we want to call super new player, or sorry, super post login and pass in new player. So we already have our default pawn set, which in this case, it's our third person character blueprint. So from here, we want to do our check. So let's comment this out. So Let's do, what was I thinking? Uh, we're going to do a post request, no, sorry. Do a get request through API, passing in ID, player ID. And we're going to do the same thing. So if no result found construct new entry and database if result found return completed struct so we're gonna have to parse through our struct now there's something we have to grab or sorry include as well and i did this inside of the word of war tutorial i cannot remember exactly what all it was, but it was, so we want to add HTTP, JSON, and JSON utilities to our build.cs. So we've got the project name build.cs. And at the end, we just add HTTP, JSON, and JSON utilities, and that'll allow us to make HTTP hits as well, or sorry, requests, as well as use JSON objects well, just their provided JSON tools. So pretty much we're going to be receiving the information that we get back from API as a string. So if we look back here, we're going to receive something that looks just like this. And it's all going to be text. So they provide functions that allow us to take this object here and convert that into an actual struct. So I'm going to go ahead and create that struct. So do it right up here. So it's going to be a use struct. I think it has to be blueprint type. B struct f player data. And we want to have the information that is stored inside of our uh, what you call it here. So what we want to pass in. Well, first off, we do generated body. And we also want to do X chord, Y chord, and Z chord. So we have a float X chord. Set that to zero by default. Float Y chord. Zero by default. And float Z chord. And set that zero by default. So when we pass and receive, we're pretty much all we're going to be doing is passing in a string version or a JSON object version of this struct. And same thing when we go to receive it, we're receiving a JSON object that we're going to convert into this struct. So really that's all we're going to be doing for now. I'm going to print out the loggers to make sure this works. So give me log, log temp, warning, text, uh, post login running. Just to make sure so we can use everything there. 
and in the next video we will actually start trying to make the HTTP request. So let me relaunch the project. I'm gonna go through and set the game mode back. So let's see, it was persistent tutorial game mode. Check the output log. And post login running. So there we are. So we know we are good to go. We no longer need our little blueprint example game mode. And we are now set up to begin. So we can, in the next video, construct our JSON object, make the HTTP request, and go from there. But first, what I want to do is simply do a get request. I'm talking about the next video. A get request just like this. So when we send it, and I just realized this is not running. So when we send it, we receive just an array of JSON objects. Or better yet, in the next video as well, we're actually probably going to do a short one where we do a simple get that takes in an ID. So that's going to be, uh, so instead of returning an array, it just returns a single object like what I have highlighted here. So that's going to be it for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down in the description. If you decide to join my Patreon, I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patrons, where we create Team Deathmatch using C++ with Unreal Engine, as well as create a bunch of other miscellaneous features, such as custom, or custom spawn points that allow you to spawn farthest away from the enemies to prevent spawn killing, and a weapon customizer to allow you to add and remove attachments to your gun. So, I'll see you in the next video.